This program is brought to you by Barrister, the Animal Emergency Centre, McGill Road, Norwood, Adelaide Veterinary Specialist and Referral Centre, The Bird Place, Applied Posture Riding and shebahorseshop.com.au for rugs and saddlery. This program is brought to you by Barristock, Cover, Con Company and Mega Pet Warehouse in Melbourne. Hi, we've got another great show of all about animals for you. I'm Olivia. And I'm Jake. On today's show I meet my star sign, the crab. And I cuddle a koala with TV personality Erin McNaught. And we get the lowdown on what it's like to have a pet lizard. After the show, make sure you check out our Facebook and Twitter pages for fantastic updates. So sit back and enjoy yet another great show of All About Animals. Check out this full-scale grey white shark. He's six metres long. Anyway, enough of sharks. I've come here to the Sydney Aquarium for the claws exhibition. So come on, let's go. So Ben, I know the Tasmanian giant crab is one of the largest anthropods. So what does anthropod mean? That's a good question. An anthropod is basically an animal yep. with a segmented, hard exoskeleton. Yep. So you can see in the background the Tasmanian crab. He's got a hard external skeleton. And this lobster here yeah. also has a hard external skeleton and it's made up of segments. That basically is what defines an animal as an anthropod. It actually means segmented foot. Um, so okay. you can see down at their legs they've got lots of little segments. Yeah. And um, how long would a Tasmanian giant crab live for? They can live for quite some time. We don't have a huge amount of data on how long old they get. Yep. It's very hard to tell with a, um, a hard bodied anthropod because they don't have any structure we can measure um, okay. that is there for the whole lifespan because they lose their shell every year. But we estimate a crab like that could be anywhere between 50, even up to 80 years old. Really? So they can live a really long time. Yeah, and I've noticed that one of the claws is bigger than the other claw, so why is that? Um, that's actually a, a generally a male characteristic and they have one large claw um, yeah. or pincer which they can grab hold of things with. And it's not so much to grab things with as a, as a way of um, displaying and showing that they're very dominant and strong. And it might also be a way for them to indicate to prospective mates, other, to females, that they're a suitable candidate to, yeah. um, you know, have offspring with. Yeah. So where is the Tasmanian giant crab found? He, the Tasmanian giant crab's found generally in the deep, cold waters um, yeah. around Tasmania, hence the name, and also South Australia. Uh, they like it somewhere down around about two or three hundred metres yeah. and they'll probably come up to about 30 metres in depth. So a pretty um, extreme environment. Okay, I've noticed that with crabs they can spend time on land and in water, so are they a water animal or a land animal? Pretty much describe the majority of crabs as aquatic. Um, even land crabs have to come back to the water to breed. Yep. So they still require the water as part of their um, life cycle. So they're, they're really an aquatic organism. I wouldn't call them amphibious um, okay. because a lot of them are, have to com remain in the water all the time. But a few individuals have specialised and enabled, that enable them to crawl out of the water and um, you know, spend a part of their time on land. Well, thanks Ben for showing me Bruce the Crab and your lobsters. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Jake. Come back anytime. <laughs> Cats can always sleep anywhere. Sometimes they find some really unusual places. So let's go have a look at some of them. Now cats love playing and spend lots of their time pouncing on toys and chasing things. And they are known to be big sleepers too. I found out that they are crepuscular, which means they are most active at dawn and dusk. This can use up a lot of their energy hunting and pouncing on toys at playtime so they love spending their days lazing around and sleeping in some unusual places. 
Cows can't sleep on average between 13 and 16 hours a day, so it's no wonder they end up in some funny positions. So if you have photos of your cats in funny sleeping positions, please share them with us at info at allaboutanimals.tv or post them onto our Facebook page. Today we're chatting to Beth about her pet blue tongue lizard. So come on, let's go. So Beth, what's your lizard's name? Um, this is Rocket. And did you call her Rocket because she's fast? Uh, no, we called her Rocket because when we first got her she was really slow. Well, this is a really different type of pet to have, so why did you choose to have Rocket? Well, um, we actually found her in winter and yep. um, it was outside and it was rainy and cold and she was about half her size. So what do you like most about lizards? Well, they're just, um, they're really fun and they're easy to look after and because we've got a small house it's easy to have them because they don't get too big but they're just really cool and nice to play with them. So uh, what does Rocket eat? Uh, Rocket eats snails most of the time and sometimes cat food because <laughs> we've got a cat so. Yeah, can I have a hold? Yeah, sure. And does he shed his skin like a snake? Um, well, he sheds every couple of months, but he sheds it more like um, all of his scales, like not yep. as a snake how it all comes off at once. Jake, can I have a hold? Oh yeah, sure. And if I wanted to get a lizard, what equipment would I need? Well, you'd need to get a terrarium, depending on the size of the lizard. If you've got a lizard like a blue tongue, you'd need a fairly big one. And in that you'd need to get UV lights and a heat lamp so that it's warm in there. Probably for the ground you'd need bark chips. And Beth, are they venomous? Uh, no. They've got a thing called lock jaw where they yep. lock onto you but they have no poison or... Has she ever tried to bite you? Uh, once when I was sitting on the couch with her because she thought I was food. I've noticed that she's always sticking her tongue out, so what is she doing that for? Um, well, lizards um, like smell through their tongue, so <laughs> she's seeing what's around her, seeing if there's food, yeah. and what's happening. Well, Beth, Rocket looks like a pretty easy pet to have. And thanks for showing her to us today. You're welcome. After the break, we visit BD Farm Paris Creek Organic Dairy to learn how dairy products are made. And later in the show, I meet the beautiful MTV host, Erin McNaught. Today, we're here at BD Farm Paris Creek to check out how organic dairy products are made. Mm. Today, we take a trip to the beautiful Adelaide Hills in South Australia to visit BD Farm Paris Creek to learn how dairy products are made. They produce award-winning milk, soft and hard cheeses, yogurts, butter, feta and quark. And all of their products are truly organic. Even better, they're biodynamic. The first thing they do is herd the cows into the dairy for milking twice each day. The cows are really well treated and looked after, which is probably why the products are of such good quality. I asked the owner, Uli, what biodynamic means. Basically, it means that they don't use any chemicals on the grass that the cows eat, and they don't use any chemical medications for the cows, so that the milk is totally chemical free. They treat the soil with totally natural preparations that are made from cow manure and vitamin rich herbs. They use natural herbs like dandelion, stinging nettle and oak bark. They also put minerals like crushed quartz crystals into the water and spray it on the grass. All of this makes the grass rich in minerals which is really good for the cows to eat. Overall, Paris Creek uses a completely natural approach to make sure their dairy products are the highest quality and truly organic. BD Farm Paris Creek milk is fresh from the cows and that's why it tastes so good. Once the cows have been milked, the milk is transferred into a massive vat for cooling. The truck picks it up and takes it to the dairy processing plant to be bottled for sale or further processed to make organic yogurt and various cheeses. To make the yoghurt, they add good cultures to the milk so that it can be thickened and become creamy healthy yoghurt. Now to make the cheese, 
They also need to add natural cultures to the milk to thicken it into curd. It then gets pressed and the excess liquid, called whey, is drained off and the remaining curd is shaped into forms to make the cheese. This fresh cheese is then matured for some time before it's packed and sent to the shops for us to buy. BD Farm Paris Creek people are very proud of the totally organic and healthy dairy products they make. So have a look for them next time you're shopping. Today we're going to learn about the proper diet for your horse. So Claire, there are many different types of feeds to feed your horse. Let's start with the show pony. What would you feed them? Um, if they're competing every weekend, you'd want a good nutritional pellet um, that's high in protein but doesn't make the horse hot. So that means it fizzes them up, it makes them a bit silly. So anything that keeps them cool and calm but gives them good nutrition so it gives them good condition in their coat and their body. And how many times a day would you feed them? Well, if they're competing every weekend, you'd probably want to feed them twice a day. So once in the morning and once in the afternoon. So do the Olympic horses eat the same sort of food? They need a high energy diet which has got good nutrition, high protein and minerals that they lose through sweating. Well I know I like my treats, can you give horses treats too? You can, you can feed them carrots and apples which are healthy for them and some people give horses licorice and sugar cubes which aren't too bad but they are not very healthy so I'd probably stick to the carrots and apples. Claire showed me what she feeds one of her ponies. She puts about half a scoop of good quality horse pellets into the feed bin. Then she adds some char for roughage and mixes it all together. Some water is added to make it easily digestible. And look how much she loves it. Thanks for your time today, Claire. That's okay. Me today. Well, today's joke was sent in from Sarah Jane of Malvern, Victoria. Yep. You ready for it? Yep. Okay. Why did the dinosaur cross the road? I don't know, Jake. Why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because chickens haven't evolved yet. Ha! <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, I gotta go. See ya. Oh. See if you can make Olivia laugh. Send your animal jokes to info at allaboutanimals.tv. Today's native Australian animal is the wombat. I'm here with Kerry from Gorge Wildlife Park to learn more about these amazing creatures. So Kerry, why does their pouch face backwards? The um, reason being is because they are such big diggers and obviously live yeah. in burrows, what happens is when they make their burrows and dig, if the pouch is the other way around, it'd fill up with dirt. <laughs> so they face it the other way, so it's easy access for the baby and the pouch doesn't get full of dirt. And how many babies can they have at a time? Normally only one. This one back here has only ever had one at a time. Okay. Very rare they can have twins, but that's quite rare. And are the wombats endangered? Um, not so much endangered. Um, a lot of states have come low in numbers, states that have had floods because they do live in burrows, so obviously the burrow fills up with water yeah. and they can't get out. So places like that, the numbers have dropped, but they're not too bad, especially in South Australia. Walmarts have been known to be slow and lazy, but I've heard they can run up to 40 k's an hour. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. They are quite slow moving when they're walking around and looking for food and that, and they do love to sleep. <laughs> but when they get moving and they need to get somewhere and fast or run from a predator, yeah, they can really get up speed. And how many hours do they sleep each day? Well, they are nocturnal, so they prefer to come out at night when there's less predators around. So they will sleep for most of the day. So if that is 12, 14 hours, that's what they'll sleep. Okay. And how big can they grow? Um, well, she's fully grown, the female that we've got at the moment. Mm -hmm. So she would weigh probably about 25 kilos. Wow. She's quite solid. They're only small looking, but they are very solid and robust. Mm. And how long can they live for? Uh, normally about 12 to 15 years. Here she is. You can give her a pat on her nose. Her nose is really leathery. Yeah, it feels like leather. It's from all the burrowing that she does. Look. Mm. Hey. And those sharp claws. I noticed some red cuts on the side of her. What's that from? That's actually from the male. So because she's got a young at the moment, she'll protect that young. And so while she's protecting it, he does attack her and it's them two fighting. Oh. She also gets them as well though from him when it is breeding season. But at the moment she has got a young that's around about seven months old. Seven months old. So she's protecting that at the moment. Thanks Kerry for showing me these wombats. That's okay, you'll have to come back when the baby's a bit bigger and see how big she actually does get. Yeah. Here he comes. To find out more, go to gorgewildlifepark.com.au.
<laughs> now stay with us because after the break, Olivia and I go to Birdtime Primary School in South Australia for RSPCA Cupcake Day. And then Olivia chats to Erin McNaught and some koalas at Featherdale Wildlife Park. Today I'm at Burnside Primary School in SA to find out about the great community work they're doing here. Hi Miss Fogo. Hi Olivia. So can you tell us how the kids are helping the RSPCA today? Yeah sure, so the Year 5 classes, both two classes have been holding a cupcake stall today to raise money for the RSPCA Foundation. So we've been busy making cupcakes and raising money for that. Wow, that's really great. So do they enjoy raising money for charities like these? Yeah, the kids enjoy uh, doing activities like this. Every kid likes a cupcake and the kids really uh, enjoy any, everything about animals. So anything to do with raising money and helping them is always something the kids enjoy doing. So was it well supported throughout the school? Yes, it was. Last week we spent uh, time allowing the kids to get prepared for the cupcakes and today on the Monday morning after the weekend of not you know, having those reminders, the kids still came out with a lot of cupcakes and all the kids at recess time were lining up with their money. We battled the weather today as well and we had a really good turnout, so yes. And why is it important for kids to get involved in events like these? It's always important for kids to get involved in events like these because they're taking action and believing in something. Um, kids enjoy the animals, like I said before, so for them to have the power for themselves to do something about it, to help those animals, they feel empowered and being able to help you know, their community and, and the wider state. Well, Ms Fogo, the cupcakes looked great and tasted yummy. Good luck with your fundraising. Thanks, Olivia. I got the one Mine's better. Mine's... Yours looks pretty good, but mine is better. No, mine's better. Mine's going to taste better. You watch. All right? I was in the bank where I was. Mm. Mm. Mine's going to taste better. All right. Burnside Primary School raised $539 that day, which was an amazing effort. The rescue to RSPCA animals will sure appreciate it. Today we're going to learn about the bearded collie, which is an uncommon breed, and they're not for the faint-hearted because they need quite a lot of time with grooming and exercising. So I'm going to talk to Linda to find out more. Hi Linda, is this the same type of dog on the paint ads on TV? No, the dog on the paint ads is actually an old English sheepdog. Okay. They, um, there's a big difference. One beard is a lot more intelligent, though mm -hmm. old English people will probably not like me saying that. Yep. They're a, a smaller build dog, they're not as heavy as the Old English and their coats are, are different to the Old English in texture and in length. Okay, so what were these types of dogs bred to do? They were originally bred in Scotland for herding. Yep. They were a very prized possession of the crofters in Scotland. They, they tried virtually to keep them to themselves. They will work on their own independently. Yep. They used to send them up the mountains. The beardy would fetch all the sheep back down, <laughs> which is one of the reasons probably for such a thick coat with the um, cold weather and the mm. ice and that in the winter. How long do you have to spend grooming him? At the puppy stage, they probably could do with the grooming once every other day. Yep. Once they hit adult, a good groom through once a week is sufficient. How much would a bearded collie cost? Between $800 and $1,200 yep. for a pedi fully pedigreed um, bearded collie. Okay. How long do they live for? That's a good question. There has been one known to live to 20 years old. Really? 20 years? Mm -hmm. um, I would say the average would be 14, 15 years. Okay. On that's, average. That's, mm -hmm. that's a reasonable age for a dog. Yep, yep. So you're, you're looking at brushing that coat for quite a long time. Well, thanks, Linda, for sharing the bearded collie with me. No, that's fine. Any time. I love the breed that much that it's a pleasure to share them with everybody. <laughs> Today I'm at Featherdale Wildlife Park in Sydney to chat to MTV host Erin McNaught about her role as the ambassador for the Australian Koala Foundation. How cool is that? Hi Erin. Hi Olivia. Now you've got such an amazing career. What's been your favourite job? So my favourite job would be going to Japan for MTV. Um, I worked for MTV as a presenter on their channel and we went to Japan and went snowboarding and um, hung out in Tokyo. And that was really, really cool. And uh, I also love doing stuff like this because I get to hang out with koalas and hang out with really nice people like yourself. So you studied wildlife biology. Is that where your love of animals started? Um, it actually started a lot earlier than that. Uh, as soon as, uh, you know, as long as I can remember. Um, back to when I was really, really little, I've always been fascinated by animals. So that's why I started studying wildlife biology. And what's your favorite animal? 
My favourite animal would have to be a tiger. Um, <laughs> when I was studying, that was my ultimate goal, was to work with the tigers at Dreamworld. Can you tell us about your role with the Australian Koala Foundation? Okay, Olivia, I'm actually the ambassador for Save the Koala Month, which is September of this year. And basically, we just try and raise awareness uh, about the plight of koalas, because there's only around 50,000 of them left in the wild. They're affected by things like dog attacks, habitat destruction, that's probably the biggest one. Um, also, they, a lot of them get killed on the roads, unfortunately. Mm. So we're trying to basically just raise awareness about um, how vulnerable they are. Oh, that's great. And what can the public do to help? Olivia, there are so many things that people can do to help. Uh, you can start off by adopting a koala for $20 a month. I actually have one here at Featherdale Wildlife Park. Her name's Sarah. Um, so that's at savethekoala.com. You can also go to Save the Australian Koala Facebook fan page and become a fan of them. Uh, you can also help by, if you see an injured koala on the side of the road, stop and see if it has a joey in its pouch because sometimes they can be saved. Uh, also reporting any koala that you do see on the highway because uh, it helps with the research so that um, we know how many koalas are still left. Oh, I really want to adopt a koala too. You definitely should. So where can we see you next? Well, you can see me in uh, the upcoming zoo campaign. I just des designed a new range of shoes, which is really exciting. And also Mambo, which is another Australian icon, much like the koala. And also every day at 5 p.m. on the MTV News. Well, thanks for your time today, Erin. It was really nice to meet you. It was really great to meet you too, Olivia. Thanks so much for having me on the show. To find out more about how you can help save the koala, go to www.savethekoala.com. Frightening, isn't it? I'll call this one Barry. He's a favourite. Anyway, it's time for my viewers' pets. Thanks for sending them in. I love looking through them all. I've got three to show you right now. This is Chelsea and Sophie from West Beach, South Australia with their pet, Bronte. Bronte is a nine-year-old fox terrier and unfortunately, he's epileptic. But that doesn't stop him constantly wagging his tail. Except when he sees cats and birds because he doesn't like them very much. However, he does love his cuddles and he is a big sook. Next we have sisters Christina, age 7, and Zoe, age 5, from North Haven, South Australia, and their pet horse called Lee. Lee is a 24-year-old, three-quarter Arab horse. He is very friendly and loves his favourite treat, licorice. He wears two rugs in winter so that he doesn't get too cold. He used to be a race horse but was rescued when he wasn't needed for racing anymore. Every year he gets decorated with antlers and Christmas colours to lead a small Christmas pageant. Nine-year-old Asha, aged nine from Redhead, New South Wales, with her pet bird Bluey and her dog called Biscuit. She says, like Olivia, I love all animals and can't wait to turn ten to get my reptile licence. Bluey is very friendly and loves to give kisses and play games. Biscuit is a rescue dog who does anything at all just to get a tummy rub. Biscuit thinks she's a human and sleeps on Asha's bed. Weren't they all great photos? You can have your photos shown on our show too. All you have to do is email three photos of you and your pet plus five interesting facts to info allaboutanimals.tv and make sure you go to our website to enter our great competitions and maybe win some amazing prizes for your pet. Well, I guess I'll see you guys next time. See ya, Bazza. Join us again for our next show as Jake hangs out with some white-handed gibbons at Gorge Wildlife Park and then I hang out with Bondi Rescue lifeguard Dino and his best mate Jaffa. We hope you enjoy watching another great show of All About Animals. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can keep up to date with what we're doing. Oh, and remember to check out the great competitions on our website. And thanks for watching All About Animals. See, See you, you next, next time. time. is brought to you by Barrister, Mount Lawley Pets and Puppies, Claremont Veterinary Clinic and Breeder's Choice. This program was also brought to you by Bets Kids, Westfield Marion, Esprit Kids, Pumpkin Patch, JR's Surf and Ski, Breeder's Choice, JJ's and Bonnet Saddle World.